it's been exhausting to have to constantly be vulnerable with people and to try to explain my feelings as a black woman in America. And there's nothing that infuriates me more than someone not listening. This is just my raw emotion. It's been really heavy, uh, to say the least. And you go through a lot of emotions of seeing yet again another black man or woman try to be executed in broad daylight. And as a black American, we can't talk about anything else but this topic of what's going on in our country right now. I try to push myself even further in this fight for social reform. Um, so, you know, when things like this happen, it gives me that extra motivation that this is why I'm fighting. This is why I sat out this season, is to fight this fight. No. We had a call with some mothers the other night that had lost their children to police brutality, and it completely changed us. And uh, hearing those stories, the, the one thing that they asked is, please don't forget our children. Please don't. And that impacted us, and that's what led to that decision. Washington was going to play Atlanta as scheduled, but the Washington Mystics held out, and there will be no WNBA games tonight. We need to understand that these moments are so much more bigger than us. If we do this unified as a league, it looks different. So it's really hard uh, because I opted out, uh, but I'm still a part of the Mystics organization. I'm still one of the leaders on the team. Uh, so it's this hard, you know, fine line of I don't want to step on toes, but I, I still want to be a leader for y'all. And, uh, you know, I had asked Ariel Atkins and Maisha Hines Allen, how are you guys feeling? They said, uh, we're feeling really heavy. We don't necessarily want to play, but we don't, we don't know. We haven't talked about not playing. And I said, I challenge you to think about it. This isn't just about basketball. We aren't just basketball players. And just because we are basketball players doesn't mean that's our only platform. We need to understand that when most of us go home, we still are black. I get choked up about it now because you see her growth. And honestly, <laughs> but you see her growth. You see during this heavy time, men and women stepping up for each other. You see athletes putting their lives on the line. So I'm extremely proud of Ariel. You got me freaking crying, hey. <laughs> extremely proud. Our league is always at the forefront, and as women, we have more to lose. We don't make what the NBA makes. That money that we're losing really hits our families in our pockets. I got you. All right, appreciate it, Tosh. All right, I'll get back to you. Thank you. All right, thank All right. you. Bye. Bye. I got a call from Ariel Atkins. Um, they've been working tirelessly. They're taking it upon themselves to figure out innovative ways to keep pushing this agenda of social justice and equity. What she told me today is that they're planning on taking shot clock violations. And during those shot clock violations, they're going to make the commentators talk about whether it's the woman they're highlighting that week, uh, talking about voting, telling people where to register at. It re-motivates me to see people out here fighting the same fight I'm fighting. It motivates me in a lot of different ways, not only because DC is a second home to me, but if they can be out here on the streets, then there's no damn reason that I'm not using the platform that God gave me. I want to be known in the community. I, I want people to know that I walk these same streets that you walk, that I don't put myself on a pedestal as a, as a professional athlete. I'm here with you. I hear y'all, I see y'all. This is us together. Being present, understanding what the fight is about, seeing this power behind this is everything. Um, so don't only speak about change, be about change. Show up, especially when it comes to voting. Show your asses up like our lives depend on it because they do.